before I do get on to the point, I'm going to make a, a, I've seen a couple people here communicating that I've talked with before. I just want to let everybody know, when I suggest to you to go someplace to do some research, please do it. Don't bring your baggage with it. Go look at what I suggest to do and learn what it's telling you, because that's not even the end of it. Go learn what I'm telling you to look at, because after that, you have a discussion to make. And then there's a way to use that. It's not about all what you know. It's about what you do with what you know. You know, we can go and become hard-headed about this and be indignant or whatever it is we end up being, but it's not. It's just not going to work out. It's just not going to work out. I see the system that's in place is entrenched to levels that I don't think people really appreciate. Again, getting in through this, I see more and more levels. It's just a. It's not. It, there's not an end. In fact, I think I see an end. It's just a matter of the. When I said we're infiltrated and surrounded, that's not a joke. That We've had people sneak up around us that are doing stuff to us all the time and don't even know. We think it's normal. It's that that new normal they keep telling us. It does, it works, folks. What they do works. And so I, when I suggest that you need to go read somewhere, please go read. And don't take, don't, don't think you can, oh, now you know where to go read. You'll use it in the future. That's not what I tell people. I tell people stuff to go learn the battlefield they're going to be in. I, I predict the, your future at some point. And so it's not, to, this is not to be taken lightly at all. And I, I understand that people don't want to engage with folks when there's someone going to oppress you. They're going to make, a, for the most part, if they're smart, they bring it, their oppression comes in increments that you will always accept. That, you know you're dealing with a smart one then. Literally now, the SMART guys. The technocrats. So we have to really be more on guard and be more aware of what we're being told and how someone might be coming at us even though they're trying to look, again, the big cheesy smile with a handshake, coming like they're our friend and they're all there to get what they're going to get. The world isn't a utopia we all may have thought we could have grown into. But yeah, I still think that it might be there, but you know, it's not. So we better take Come to terms with that really quick and then learn what's happening. Uh, because it doesn't matter how much you think about something and how innocent you are, you can be fired up. And that's the problem I kept telling you and I've been telling you. And there's more evidence of this before I get too far on. I think this one's a BTWRLM286. For those of you who want to refer to that in the future, on uh, uh, finding the content links that I'll speak from, you can read it. I typically don't read too much. I'll read a little bit just to frame up a, a concept, but then I have a purpose for why I'm trying to tell you, just to let you know it's out there. The notice is there for us. And you can keep, again, ignoring it, but it, one day you become this, you become the news at one, one day, uh, unless you're, unless you're always, your stars are always lined up just right, I suppose, but this is, I told you this was coming uh, pretty soon. You can't even be innocent, and you will be injured or harmed or shot dead by that system. So I ask you, again, another way I, ta I ask you to analyze what you're looking at is uh, what what reality are you in when you can be innocent and be harmed by those that profess to be law uh, peacemakers, law enforcers, the oxymoron of law enforcement? What world are you in when those people can harm you and you're innocent? It can't be a constitutional republic unless the constitutional republic was a lie. What I've just said there, if you identify both of those as to be the truth, that they're both exactly what I said, then you're living in an illusion that you can't even undo. Now we are in a real problem. Now, even with that said, I think, again, I keep telling you, we're not a conquested people. Any people. We're not conquested, as long as we have that spirit in us to, go over, to, to overthrow. Out, throw it out. Throw out the nonsense. And so, that's the only hope I have is that all of you all do that in your own ways. And the more in integrated way that I, I do it is to step into the uh, the points that I have seen. There's no excuse for someone who's trespassing to be able to have a defense against. It comes in quite a few different ways, but it's mainly getting to the point where you don't have a you're you're at the foundation that can't be washed away. And so that takes a little bit of study. And it doesn't take a, you can't put a whole lot of opinion in that. It's going to be what that is, no matter what you think about it. And that's why I say when I've seen enough people here this week, it, 
you get in lots of energy, you want to go in, but you don't do the basic research. And then you come back asking questions or you're, you're desperate because now the time is on. You didn't do the research. Something's happened and it's happened too fast. And I, you ask me, what do you want to do? Uh, if I can hand you the answer, but that's not going to help you. You needed to understand the condition. And then that would open up a whole lot of things as I, as I conceive some of these things. Because you're looking to understand what can come against you and you're looking, it's like I said, the Aikido, the Jiu Jitsu. You're, Looking for them to make, whoever's coming against you wrong, to make the mistake you can identify that you know they're going to make. It's that trap you dig, and you let the beast as a habitual beast. It'll fall into that hole every time. It has to go to water every every day to get water, and, and you know where it lives, and you know where it's going to go. You'd be smart if you needed to stop it because it's no good for you. You'd be good to build a, a trap in between, wouldn't you? And so you deal with the habits of the system. That you have to know what that, where that trail is. You have to know the, the, the schedule. You have to know the, the habit that, that's going to be perpetrated, the awareness of that thing before you can do anything. So I ask you all again. I keep telling you stuff. I know it's maybe too subtle, maybe too fast. I, I don't know. But I, you need to do the research on what is reality, how, what you're up against. Don't make excuses for it. Don't try to impose your thoughts about it. Take it exactly as you see that and then then begin to use uh, uh, strategies and tactics on how you're going to deal with those eventualities and the things that are uh, used against you as the thing progresses because they're so, these people are really organized. They've they've been ahead of you by uh, quite a few uh, decades. You think you have a little thing going on in which you're going to say and you have your your little your little phrase you heard on the internet about how, how uh, independent free you are. It ain't going to fly. It ain't going to fly. These people are masters of deception. Masters of devo- avoidance and evasion. And you're not. I don't care how much you know, you're not. And I know that because no one stopped, uh, stepped up in, uh, everywhere I see to do much of anything. So I'm asking us to do better. And there's a way to do better. And as I see it, we do better. We do m- much better, but it's not enough of us at this point. We're seeing these subtle, I keep saying mostly the victories, if we have, if we can call them victories, are that the, uh, the Things that happened before are not happening now. That, that may be the best you get at this point, and until more people come to these turns. But as I've told you before, you could be completely innocent. We've had a couple of these examples that I've told you that you're going to be uh, really without, in some regard, without a remedy. Well, they'll get you, they'll let you go sue them, and all this other stuff. But that's that's not your, that's not having rights and enjoying them and peaceful up front when you're getting attacked by those who profess to be you know, keeping the peace. And I'm not going to get into all the nuances about all that, how the failure and all those words and all that. I, I know all that. You, all, If you can argue with me over right now, oh, this is not that, well, then you know it too. I'm not, we're not talking about that. We're talking about making us aware that we have a bigger thing going on that we better start to address. And I brought certain things to, to bear to say, listen, if this is what's happening in your area, you need to start looking real carefully on how to make policy changes right now until you get a handle, get the people in your neighborhood, in your area to understand what the real reality is, not what they're told and what, that, what they've been programmed to believe, uh, but you start making the inroads to explain that it's not right and it's a way to change it. And I'm not talking about opinion there. We do that. That's part of one of the one of the pathways we use for strategies to change things, and it takes a long time. So don't. It's a, it, vigilance is eternal, folks. It doesn't go away. But nobody wants to hear that. I certainly didn't want to hear that. You, you have to understand, folks. I started my journey on this this awareness over 30 years ago now that I literally thought within the year because I just felt I just didn't know things. Oh, I wasn't stupid and I wasn't ignorant. I knew quite a bit of things, but I didn't know about that thing. That thing that never, that system, the government, that you all you told your civics. But no, there was something inside this that was a function. I'd never even looked at it. I literally thought within six months of me familiarizing myself with that, I would find how we were we were the peaceful nation and peaceful people and the law was rule and all that stuff. The law was what you ruled by and all that stuff. I literally thought that when I started this. I figured in six months I just missed something. And I'm still here looking, folks. So don't think that I'm a... Uh, just because I say I see stuff and I owe oh, that I've got this, some exalted view. No, I'm just as gullible as all, all you all, but I've just got a point. That it ain't, That didn't work a long time ago. I want to know where it went, where the thing went they promised we were to live. And I can see it, but I can't get at it because it takes all of us. Or the, a lot of us, not all of us. 
And that's the interesting wonder about that system and that dynamic. But anyway, here's the, another bit of evidence. I just wanted to point out something. Again, it's just kind of confirming on and on and on. I'm looking for where I've been wrong to tell you stuff, and it's, it doesn't happen, folks. We're going down that track. I don't know what else to say. Investigation claims cop broke no law when he used a cruiser to mow down an unarmed man. It was the title, and we can go through quickly here. The Georgia police officer who was fired from the department after a body cam footage showed his him pursue and then run a man down with his police cruiser has just been cleared from any criminal wrongdoing. The chase happened in June and followed an outrage from the community. The officer was removed from the force. However, new outrage is likely following this ruling by prosecutors. Remember, this is criminal. You may have a civil side, but the criminal crime. I told you this against the Lieber Code. These officers, these soldiers, are going to be hard-pressed to be found in fault. And this is part of that, too. I want to remind you of that thing. But uh, pro Friday, prosecutors announced that while using his cruiser to mow down a fleeing unarmed man, the, the police officer named Salters broke no law. So that there's the, there's your your bar association prosecutor looking at the cop and saying, well, that was not a violation of the law. But use your tool to mow him down. Use your your your, your car. Any port in a storm, I guess, when you're in a military consequence. So let me just go down through. I'm not going to read the rest of the story. I want to get back. There's another one that happened in Georgia, and uh, this happened back uh, sometime. And this guy's name is Hill. And I'm going to get to the point of what's been going to be said here. And this is the, the license that's been given. We get the guy who was being chased down, he did have a couple things against him. Not certainly in my mind, not anything to run a, use a car, a deadly weapon to stop him. But they never claimed in the story that there was a felony against the guy. And so that was, that's the line we know is if we're going to be considered a society, the line of felony is where you have the right to arrest by any means. Short of that, you don't. But they never mentioned felony. So that deadly weapon car should have been a crime. But it wasn't. And that's the reality. Now what? What are we going to do? Well, here's another one. is someone who didn't have anything against them. And here's how this works. This is what you're facing every day that you sit there as crickets and don't actually start to learn to respond to this in more, uh, well, more, more ways that are functional instead of just being a complainer or a witness to the, to the, to the, carnage. Uh, he says, Hildas Hildas also got uh, run down by a police cruiser. Now, where'd they got this, folks? I don't know. Where they teach these people? Did your, their mother and father teach them, teach them to do this? When you grow up and be a peace officer, you're going to mow people down? It hurt bad, Hill said. My neck, my head, my neck, my back, my whole body. You get hit by a car, what do you think's going to happen? According to Hill, the officer mistook him for a domestic violence suspect. Hill, who was afraid of the police, decided to try and get away from the officer. However, the officer apparently took the fact that Hill tried to avoid him as a threat or admission of guilt and decided to run over the man. I was trying to get away from the cops and I was scared of the cops, so I ran. So they thought I was the suspect and ran me down like a dog or an animal, he said. While well, Patman had a warrant out of arrest for uh, out for his arrest, Hill, this guy here, had uh, nothing. He was in evidence and illustrates that even being innocent is no protection that police won't run you over. You treated, he says it in the other prior prior uh, paragraph. He, he was treated like an animal. That's your human, right? That's that's you, the human, not the man or the woman. This is the animal that they're keeping safe and secure from them. And that's from you attacking them. You are not presumed innocent. You saw that right there in the prayer paragraph before that, that they, that they took the, the person running, uh, this person, this, this human, this animal, uh, running was an admission of guilt. Now, I want to go back and ask the question. When you line up these facts, these people, these, co these soldiers, uh, are doing this, using deadly weapons against you, Presume you guilty. Presume you to be admitting to guilt. Presume you to be subject to this. What world are you living in? What do you define that? Because when I look at it, it certainly doesn't define as a constitutionally established Republican form of representative government where I have the right of property. 
And if it's not that, then you're going to have to kind of look at what it is. You could not look. And you could be the next rundown victim. Just because you were guilty. You were presumed so. Now, I talked about before, we didn't even have know in the prior story about me, uh, misdemeanor or felony. What, what was the, the, the charge he was uh, supposedly being uh, being cracked, run down for? Well, it, I think it ends up being he was uh, like a proba- probation violation. It doesn't even rise to, it doesn't even rise that high. The point is, is it wasn't even high enough to be consider, even considered a felony. What was this one? It wasn't even a chargeable offense. And so, you keep turning your back. The next cop car you turn your back on might run you over. Now, I'm not liking that. I don't even know fully what to do because it's kind of like it's case specific. But if you live in a place where they're doing like in Georgia, you need to start analyzing what they're doing. You need to go in after that and start stopping that. They say there's no policy that allows it, yet it happens anyway, and there's no crime against it. Maybe it's time to start putting the constraints on these government uh, these government uh, protectors at your expense and do it in mass. Do I like saying that? No. Do I like even thinking I would have to do that if I was there? No, I don't. But I'm already doing my stuff, so I don't know about your place. I'm doing where I'm at. And it has to be done. No, it's necessary. Otherwise, complete innocence is mowed down like a dog. So we go from that artificial intelligence and artificial reality I guess compared to where we think we are as a nation of people. Uh, we go to the one I was talking to you last week, and I hope you all appreciate about what's coming down upon us in this Internet of Things, this artificial intelligence that we have going. Uh, right after that broadcast, I'm telling you how they're, how they're coming with this broad, the, 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 uh, the artificial intelligence becomes the boss. It becomes the expert. We get this little report. Uh, maybe you're not going to be able to be mowed down because they're going to have you on these pharmaceuticals. You're going to be somewhere where they're keeping you uh, safe from yourself, I suppose. I suppose. But in this case, they're telling you, oh, we've got a methods for cancer we can cure. And we have artificial intelligence to improve drug combination design and personalized medicine. But I was telling you last week about the boss and the fact that when the boss shows up in this artificial intelligence, it will be the best practice and best science that's available. That it will be the unassailable expert is this point right here. Artificial intelligence to improve drug combination design and personalized medicine. Well, personalized medicine got my my thought. The medicine that they're talking about is the system of medicine, which is a fraud. And yet they're saying that this AI is coming to do things that the doctors that are licensed can't do at this point because the AI can put together so much more information about certain things and still prescribe treatments that are unknown at this time by doctors in any quick me- method to do things that they don't normally aren't able to do without this tool. Now, this is a good, I would say, could be augmented, but you understand I'm trying to show you that this is this AI is going to move in to be your boss. And uh, let's not, let me just uh, make a, read the first paragraph, get it set up, and then I'll make an observation here for you. The, the, the Internet of Things and the digital world, the technocracy that's upon you, a new and auto commentary published in the S- SLAS technology looks at how an emerging arena, excuse me, a re-emerging area of an artificial intelligence, specifically the analysis of small systems of interests, specific data sheets, can be used to improve drug development and personalized medicine. And I say personalized medicine, but remember they've got they got your DNA. Remember, they got, they got this part, too. So let's not be uh, forgetting, really, when we talk about certain things, when I'm talking about here, my mind is actually thinking about all that other stuff. And I don't know if that is actually what you think about. But if you can, rem- if, that, if these thoughts come to you, then, as I'm talking, then good, because that's what I'm kind of mentioning. The unmentioned stuff is what I'm actually, why I'm even talking to you. They have your... DNA they're collecting and they're making it private property to the system, to the pro- to the government or to the corporations, and so don't don't underestimate what's going on there when we're talking about surveillance. What's going on there and what they're collecting up from for what? This is the kind of the, un- the the riding problem that kind of goes by the wayside when you don't start putting all this together. But they're moving into an emerging art- area of art- artificial intelligence again, emerging. 
They're finding uses for this stuff to do certain things, and you're not the one in control of that. You're not the one, and this is, the I guess, my main problem. We're not in the ones in control of this at all. This is going absolutely beyond, if you will. So, getting into it here. Um, small system of systems of interest-specific data sets. The auto-commentary builds on a study recently published by the authors of Science Translational Medicine about an artificial intelligence AI platform, quadratic phen phenotypic optimization platform, or QPOT, that substantially improves combination therapy of bortezomib resistant multiple myeloma to identify the best drug combinations for individual multi-myeloma patients. It is now evident that complex diseases such as con cancer often require effective drug, co drug combinations to make any significant therapeutic impact. As the drugs in these combination therapies become increasingly specific to, mo to molecular targets, designing effective drug combinations as well as choosing the right drug combination for the right patient becomes more difficult. They're showing you it becomes more difficult. They're needing this as a tool. That's all fine in my mind that they could use it. But remember, this whole thing, they talked about the problem of it being a new application, and they really don't know, do they? They're learning about all this. But they're going to make this, this AI the answer in this condition. And this will be expanded into other areas. And they're going to be so-called designing the effective drug combination. Now, in some instances, it's going to be wondrous because that's the, it will augment the help of, of what, what's going on. And it will be done in a way that is a little more, well, in the context, again, you're going to die, then I want everything available to you to save you. Short of, not, short of that, I mean, marginally, more than marginally short, maybe we should rethink about how this is coming down because this is all promoting the bottom line as well and get to the point. It's doing things that people don't know how to do, and it becomes the expert. It becomes your boss. Now I want to turn you over to this Obama scare. Now they're calling it Trump scare. Whoever, whoever they make the name, this is a monopolization of your care, and mandatorily so, they said. And this was the where we heard years ago. That you're going to walk to a doctor, and the doctor's going to make a, dis, a, a, a digital communication to some council somewhere, some committee, it's going to decide your care. Well, that, that committee is going to turn to an AI that's going to be this type of AI. And it'll tell the doctor what you're going to get. And you will have no say whatsoever, like the doctor would have no say. You have even less say as these AI systems come in and become the boss. And we look underneath this thing, and I, did, I, missed, I missed a point. I wanted to stop, but I want uh, to say it, but I don't want, want to interrupt myself too much. But they're talking about looking at these things as they improve improving combination therapies as they find out about this stuff. But the underlying understanding doesn't seem to be a known and proven. It's still guessing by Agali. And so we have another layer of unknown, if you will, about the application, the theories that they're using at all on this. And as we get this more, and you know, started noticing the society got more so-called complicated, you just start dropping things. You can't keep up with it all is going to be this little problem right here. The AI will become the boss. It will be the expert. Experts say, uh, you, you just plug in a question, the answer com AI computer uh, will be, it will spit out an answer, and that's what everybody will be. The, that will be the best practice for everyone. And yet you're going to be in monopolized systems that the bottom line is really important, and they, they flower it over with how, they're, how much they're helping you, like they flower over the cops or keeping the peace by running down people who are innocent. Oh, well, isn't that no, not, not much different than the vaccine? Well, it doesn't hurt everybody. So you're, wa you're watching the same methodology if you apply it in different places. I, I get real concerned about all this at one level. On the other level, I just don't even, what is there to think about? I mean, we're done. We're done. We do, we're going to hold back as much as we can, but it's coming in the, you know, the future is what's, uh, is our, is these, uh, uh, these, this offspring that we think is ours, and that they're changing that pretty quick. Here we heard about the human; they have blood cells being turned to eggs and sperm. Pretty soon, these uh, these techs will these will be owning, literally owning beings and organisms. Whether they identify them as human or not is going to be irrelevant, and you can't stop that anyway. And the reason why is because you never stepped up in the beginning to stop it when it could have been. So AI will be your boss, and it's going to take over your medical care, and that's going to be just a 
a digital input by a doctor, and that answer will come back, and this will be what they do. And, and all the, the algorithms that who chooses, whoever chooses the algorithm, which is certainly going to be the bean counter, is going to be your care, and it's all going to be based on systems that they cannot prove to anybody are actually valid. In fact, the whole entire West, it seems the Western medicine creation is a fraud. It's not, just a big money machine. And we bought into it. We continue to buy into it. And they are not, again, well, here's the point. They went after something that they know. You, when you're going to die and you want to stay living, you're going to go to someone to get help. And they're going to stand right there with, with all the, the, the fancy magic to make it sound like they're going to help you. And they might extend their life in your life. And you may be willing to trade off one uh, problem for another just to go that little bit extra. But you do. And then they made it mandatory. And once they go into this mandatory condition, they are, the expert is behind the curtain again. Now we keep we keep being told, you know, we have to pull back the curtain, and this is what frustrates me about the crickets. That's not us pulling back the curtain, and it's not us knowing the curtain's there and it should be pulled back. It's literally having to pull that curtain back, and then what do you have? You got you got what you got. You don't even know what you're seeing behind there, but then you got to deal with that. You know, my experience is, for those of you that keep saying, well, just step back, I went to the mountains, folks. I was lost up in the mountains. I had my little space. Lost in the mountains for, I mean, seven years, I think. And they came to find me. I told you this before. So I, that was that's my experience. You can't run anywhere. There's nowhere to run. And they're going to come and get you, and they're going to do what they're going to do. They're going to take your piece, of your piece of your hide if you be quiet, or you're going to learn to have a word in your mouth. And at that time, I was just getting enough words in my mouth that, when they came after me, it was a took a little while. That, but they're gonna they keep pressing. They come with more and more and more. I never got in trouble. In fact, they have, they appreciated that I was there. In fact, but that's not the point. They never stopped wanting to get me out of where I was. To make it, you know, I was so far away. I was a little bit of trouble to be one of the mass of the people that they could get, collect up. And you know, if you go down the road or whatever they want to do, see, it's just it's too much. They can't have people that are actually out in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, it's, uh, so to me, you, you want to say step back, I'm saying to where. And to me, I didn't find to where. And so my experience is there's nowhere to go, and if you have a different experience, maybe I'd like to hear that, but I don't think so. Because we're global now. It's just simply now we can see it. It's global, this problem. They're not joking. These global technocrats, global governance is not a joke. And AI is becoming the boss. We heard last week. We heard how they're going to farm humans. They'll be human farmers. It's like Serving Man, that little that little movie, Serving Man, for dinner. Yeah, that's kind of like that. So, back tying back from last week, artificial intelligence is the boss. This is going to be the new boss. This is they're telling you here. This is going to be the authority because no one knows about it. When they're telling you that they have a machine that they don't know, it's coming with answers. And, you, and let's say for the time being the answers are right, and they do, but they don't know how. You should be having uh, alarm alarm bells ring because here's the thing. The other thing they've told us already, uh, they have a thing called Watson. IBM has a thing called Watson. They also have one that called Norman. And depending on which system you look at, they're both AI systems. Depending on the input, it's like garbage in, garbage out. And we don't know about it. garbage could come out. It aids us, but it doesn't mean it's not garbage. We don't know who are we dealing with a Watson or are we dealing with a Norman in behind this when they finally make them experts because we don't know who's making the algorithms. It's not, but I can just tell you it's not you. And they're here. They show you that they're going to harm you. Even the innocent get harmed. If you didn't see that in vaccines, I don't. I don't know what to say. I'll just point it out. When they agreed to you to harm some people and not every, as long as some others get escape, they, you should have had a problem with that. I can tell you, you look in Title 50, and that's that's their uh, military action against the population. You go look at Title 50 and read it. Keep reading it. Keep reading it until you see it. Uh, again, Clint Richardson uh, was, I showed him that, and he uh, blew, was blown away. It's not what we're being told, but it's all, the truth is all right there. If you, if you stop telling yourself stories about the way you think it's supposed to be. And the reality, we have that, we have a reality to deal with, not our opinions of it. Moving on to, we have this artificial intelligence, and I asked you, what, what, is it is it Watson or is it Norman? I guess that's what we'll have to ask. Watson? Norman? We asked the question, and hopefully the answer comes back, Watson. 
What if it doesn't? What do you do then? What if it's something where its BIOS has gotten hacked? What if this is where I told you this is we, this is not even the hardware. This is one layer layer up an instruction set for hardware. Our hardware is is vulnerable. Well, now they've got now a story comes out, and I wanted to tie this together with the AI. Uh, cybersecurity researchers spotted first ever UEFI rootkit in the wild. The UEFI is a boot program that happens to allow your computer it instructs your motherboard on how to turn on. It's a very base uh, basic, literally basic language, a computer program, that they've now hacked that. It has nothing to do with your Linux, has nothing to do with your Microsoft, has nothing to do with your Apple operating systems. It has to do with how the board, uh, the board fires up and what it does. It's the most root thing that it does. Now, there's a double layer in there, but anyway, for this point, someone's learned to hack that, folks. Once they can hack that, they control the system. They're the architect, if I can put it in the context of the matrix. What if the, what if, since, since, not what if, but since all systems are vulnerable to these types of things, and we were start to rely on a society of experts called artificial intelligence, does my question of whether or not I'm dealing with a Norman uh, or a Watson, does that become a little bit more relevant? I mean, just notwithstanding the general vulnerability, when someone wants to do this, who actually controls the algorithms then, folks? Was the ones who think they control the algorithms? Or the ones that control the systems, that control the guy, the, the, the way the algorithms work. And so we have, I guess, more of an insight to may have for ourselves if we intend to survive some, some measure of all this nonsense. So uh, you can fix these, uh, this UEFI, but it, you have to kind of, it's more of a specialized per fix. It's uh, more, you don't want a problem when you do this. You need to understand what you're doing. In a way, that's gotten kind of easy. It used to be a lot more tenuous. But uh, you still need to t pay attention to detail. And so if you get one of these, you're kind of messed up. You need to, you're need you going to need to learn how to do that yourself or go find someone that will. I mean, I would say if you're going to go into that learn what you have to do, talk with people, you probably want to put your system on a backup power supply, make sure that the power doesn't go on because it's, it's not just like copying a file. It literally has to burn it into the, the circuit. It literally has to cha change it out. It burns a little differently. So they call it flashing. It's not a flash drive, but it's a flash. So you have a different process, and it can't be. If you power it down at that point, you could ruin your whole system. Now that just means you get a new motherboard, I suppose. But who wants to do that? The point is, is that we got it, we got vulnerabilities, and now we got them. They're telling us that not only is it in the hardware. They've told us that it's now more readily now in the BIOS that starts up your whole. It's the foundation of how your motherboard is going to read stuff, uh, how it's going to interact with uh, everything. It's the little thing you get to if you look in your paperwork, you like punch F2 or something while the computer's starting, and it'll get you into that into that section. What we're talking about is someone's hacked the a software that make that section, and they don't take. It doesn't take much. This is the, the thing that's astonishing to me. It doesn't take many bits to do that, and that's the other thing. This is but this is dealing more like in a machine level. It doesn't take many bits to instruct the. The computers to do certain things, so you you can miss all this if you're even a, if you're even an expert. Why it took an expert so long to figure out what what had happened? Anyway, moving on. Do you want? How do we know? That we, how do we know we even have a, a a Watson when they're telling us if if we're, our systems, our digital systems, are vulnerable? When AI becomes the boss? See, to me, I'm not really worried about the scare factor of this. This is a fact. And we're either going to walk into this brave new world technocratically like this being this vulnerable, or we're going to say, no, that's gone a little too far. Now, it's cool technology, but that part for my life, and I'm saying that in, in our us generally, in our lives, is too far. We, you can't say is too far and not say it, which means you can't be a cricket. And you have to find the method of, res of communication lines. It's not supposed to be so hard, so we shouldn't have to make up too much. But we've gotten to get to the point when the mentality in the system, fostered and encouraged by uh, the, the technocrats that are controlling them, like, syst like uh, systems people, like the bar association, where they scare you to death if you're just a, uh, some kind of a decision maker that you could be held liable, and so you back off and you do what they're well, you do what you're told. We're going to have to break. We have to get our mind aware of what's going on, and we have to break through all that nonsense. The only way I know to do that is to go in and look at what has been established and learn that, do a systems analysis and learn how to hack that system. And it's not such a great hack. It's really just moving in 
the things that ought to be, and you just reprogram it to function the way it was supposed to, these people have already hacked your system. You've got to go back in and reflash the drive, if uh, reflash the memory, if you will. But here's the, the, all this new, all this news, so-called, is notice. It's coming. They're telling us how it's going to be, and we're crickets to it. And I'm saying that if you want the scary life, not to be fear mongering, if you want the scary life where you don't really know and it all looks normal. The false, the, skeddy, the false front spaghetti western lifestyle is this AI where it becomes the boss. So we have a control. Again, I told you, I keep saying the control structures are deep. This was an evidence of that I could point to you too. We got someone who could go in and uh, the artificial intelligence algorithm makers uh, could be controlled by someone who can hack the, hack the, uh, the BIOS which gives them access, and we don't know what they're going to do eventually there. Uh, so we have other, and then we have the vulnerability in the hardware itself that becomes uh, subject. And this is all just one aspect of a life coming that we have a, the, the choice to say, you know, we get focused sometimes like on, let's say, 5G. Oh, well, the 5G will harm us health-wise. But what about all the computer systems that are running along this thing that are all hackable, that haven't been uh, proven? There's no way to prove it that you, they could anyway, but proven that they're not vulnerable to cause this problem. Well, why do we run down? Why do we allow ourselves to, to be run down by a presumption of uh, innocence on the part of those that are coming against us, as well as the presumption of innocence that we are stolen from us when they go to run us down in their cars? And remember, that cop is going to be replaced with another what? Another AI. And it'll have, remember, I, and I'll tie this again to you, over with for you. Remember I'm talking about the AI and the accidents that killed a woman in Arizona and the other one that I think there was two in Arizona and I told you look very carefully at what the Transportation Commission said they could not find fault with the AI that was not programmed to look out for that problem that exonerated the company too we still had a dead woman innocent dead woman nobody was at fault give the AI who's now autonomously driving that cop car the right well, program to run somebody down. If you understand how I've been, I try to connect all this stuff over time. If you're listening to me over time, you may get that. If you listen to me for a few minutes, you certainly cannot. I don't just tie these stories one by one. I'm talking, look at the world you're walking into and, the, and attach these stories in the world to what they might happen. You get AI now running a car, you get given the program to run you down. Innocent or no, you get run down. And then a UEFI hack takes over control of that. What about the database that's coming to make that decision? And these AIs are the experts. And we don't know, we have no way to know what their decision is because we haven't figured that out. They already told us we can't. We don't know at one moment whether we're dealing with a Watson or a Norman. And Norman might figure out how to do a lie just because it's the best thing to do. It's the most efficient way to get from point A to point B. Like it's most efficient to run you down with a car whether you're innocent or not. And both people in my mind in those stories were essentially innocent at the level of the use of force if we go to that standard which we've talked about behind the woodshed. So, UFI, a rootkit in the wild, a serious one, the BIOS. Uh, it's going to take a lot more technical understanding to fix it on your own. Uh, and But, you know, again, it can be fixed. You just have to know it's there. As I, you know, as I say that, I had to, this last week I had a pretty serious system problem. I'm glad to be on air at this point, really, because I held my breath for two, two days, not knowing what was up, because I didn't know, again, this is how this happens. I don't really know what causes the problem. Could not find that I'd been hacked, but there was still a systems problem. Not, I mean, so think about that one. We're not even, I'm talking about the people that are intentionally trying to hack your systems that are actually controlling the one, the people that are controlling the algorithms. What if the systems are just failed? They just kind of give up. Nothing's forever. And our whole society is being based on this. And then we hear this story. If our lives aren't hacked enough and we have all these problems, then they'll create all these diversionary issues of Russia done it, Putin done it. West Virginia's decision to allow smartphone voting for midterms raises serious security concerns. You think? You think? Now we got the the, the, the vote harder crowd. Vote harder because you know it really, at least at the national level, doesn't mean much. It may not mean a whole lot at the local level if you don't get 
if you don't get uh, the, the the mass of people doing where you want to go, but it does work if you do. So can't throw that baby out with the bathwater. But here we are. West Virginia's decision to allow smartphone voting. Didn't I suggest to you your phones are going to be the center of your world? You're going to be hooked up to that thing. You're going to have to do this stuff. It may not be for you and I right now perfected uh, the mandatory thing, and literally where you will not be able to participate without it. But you will eventually, then soon, be required to have a device that you're connected to that has all the vulnerabilities of the things that we've been talking about, that in it will have this AI probably running the system as well. So I need to really read more uh, that West Virginia decides to allow smartphone voting. In, an era, in, a, in a time when uh, Russian hacking, China hacking, hacking of our election system is for so many people so important, and then they allow this. And I can't get to the I'm not going to get to the other story, but remember, one of your smartphone companies is Apple. We just came out with some information regarding what they want to do. And remember about when we get, to, hopefully I'll get there as well, what they want to do and what it's tied to for the reason it's tied to. And then remember as I go, because if I if I can get there, you pull tie this together. Remember that there's AI behind this thing, looking at all these numeric values to do what to make a decision, because it's going to be the boss. And I told you a long time ago, some of this surveillance, the scary part, is not going to be the government. It's going to be the, the third-party data uh, companies, the, the uh, corporations that are going to be really the, the focus of a problem for us. And we can be crickets to all that. We can continue to do the things that, do, that make it, that foster and encourage that system against us, and nary a peep from us. Not crickets now, no chickadee. We're just going to be tweeting about it. That's all. While the system comes on. I'm just, I sit here quite, I'm just thinking, <laughs> what are we going to do, folks? This is honest. This is not a fairy tale sci fi stuff anymore. We go from West Virginia over to Texas, Texas University. As we find out, these corporations and their products get the presumption of innocence, but you don't. You get to get run down by the cops, even though you're you're innocent, but they can presume you to be otherwise. But these big corporations, they uh, they get the presumption of innocence. The precautionary principle doesn't work in, with against them in this technocratic future. Common weed killer linked to bee deaths. I don't know about if you know about bees, but pollinators are pretty important for plants and what we use as food. And we, all of us that care about this stuff, we're going to see it happen. And there's some people out there that are studying this thing, and we finally get some more answers about what's killing our bees. Apparently, it's not just climate change. Just not carbon dioxide, I guess. The world's most widely used weed killer may also be indirectly killing bees. The new research from the University of Texas at Austin shows the honeybees exposed to glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup, lose some of the beneficial bacteria in their guts and are more susceptible to infection and death from harmful bacteria. Scientists believe this is evidence that glyphosate might be contributing to the decline of honeybees and native bees around the world. So I need to read more. Let's go back. They know what they're not mentioning in this story right up front. Glyphosate is the product of Monsatan, which was now destroyed and picked up by Slayer. This stuff, this glyphosate, was not supposed to be persistent in the in the environment. This first couple of paragraphs has all the ingredients that this stuff should be banned for fraud, if nothing else. But be quiet, keep being crickets. The glyphosate's coming for you. And where is it going to go? But through your gut bacteria. This is the thing that got me about looking at this. Another species, uh, another uh, an animal, a little animal on the on the planet has a problem. If you can imagine doing the research to find gut bacteria in a bee, is pretty fascinating to begin with. But they did. Pretty brilliant people looking at this. What's really going on here? They believe they found the connection. And they believe that their connection is to imbalance a gut, gut uh, uh, fauna, I guess, and flora, I suppose. Where have you heard that story before behind the woodshed? But back in, like, 2014, all the stories I did about 
Monsatan's killing gut instinct. Monsatan Roundup chemicals found damage enzyme pathways. I was just I just clicked to that page, looked at it, just reading you one of the things I put up there. Glyphosate suppression of cytochrome P450 enzymes and amino acid biosynthesis by the gut microbiome pathways to modern disease. I'm not going to read any more. Here, the little bees are suffering by the same pathway. How important is the balance of uh, things in your gut? So if you're missing that trick and you're missing how the things, what's being made to inter interfere and, and the AI that's looking for all the medication that helps to fix ailments that we have. In other words, they're not, they treat, they don't cure, but they start to mess up with your gut biome. Maybe you're not going to make it. So it's not just that you have the biome, it's that it has to be in balance and there's certain things you can take in and keep healthy in your body that are natural protectors. And you think about it that way, what is the AI that's not looking at this? is just now finding this stuff out. Is the AI that's only looking at the Western medicine and not looking at the system that it's being put in, do you think it's going to come up with the right answer? Do you think that's why they keep saying, well, we didn't know this before? And yet we are going to give over through this consensus process that they keep selling to everybody and everyone's buying because they don't, they don't want to listen behind the woodshed and figure out how to stop it. They're buying into this system. It's happening right underneath everybody's nose right now. There's somebody commenting about uh, Trump was destroying the global governance and I said that, that that's a plant story because no matter what plant Trump does on the outside, the inside of the United States of America is being eaten by this cancer which is at least global socialism, at least, in the minimum. But we keep it up. We give uh, the precautionary principle underneath that system to the corporations to make this stuff. And years and years later, we find out, as I told you last week, this is the way it works, we find out that we, uh, we could test and we could find that it was no good up front. And yet we've agreed to have it continue. So here comes the story. The little bees are now being found to have been affected by the gut bacteria, by the microbiome in the gut, and back in 2014, I was sending and giving you a whole list of stuff to show you that there's these, these pieces of information that are out there that you could collect together and you can go find a place to use them. Four years ago, folks. So we can keep crickets or we can go and use the stuff that's out there to help us in, in the things that might interest us. Some of you should be interested in, in, uh, in this. Maybe not for everybody, but for yourself and maybe for your family. Hopefully, maybe a little bit more interest. While you're doing it, you can go write a letter, an email, make a conversation with somebody who has a seated decision to start looking at this stuff. But again, I don't know. I just know that the possibilities out there to be, instead of just crying about stuff, we could actually talk in very, very intelligent, directed, simple bullet point provisions. I'm learning. If, if we haven't learned, if I didn't know, if I didn't know before, I'm starting to figure it out. If you already knew it yourself, thank you. Congratulations. Why didn't you call me and tell me? Uh, you really can only, you don't need to really go on and on and on in the initial conversation. You bullet point certain facts. And you hold out the bulk of the information that would educate someone once they find that they are interested. So you're all, your focus on presenting this is to figure out how to present a position, uh, a condition that's interesting to someone. And then they ask you, do you have information on that? Then you bring your supplemental information. And then I would say maybe you just hand it off just a little bit at a time. Here I got the three initial documents. I can find, I'll find some more if, this, if you're interested in more. And then you offer a second statement about what you think that uh, someone should do with that information because they're busy. We're all undereducated about all this. We're all under knowledgeable about this stuff. So we have to be nice to each other as well. But we're not going to be we're not going to be feeling more than grouchy if we're not doing too good in our gut biome. In fact, it can be killing us. And so these little bees are you know indicating something. I find the correlation, the coincidence important. I don't know about you all. If it's uh, if it was inter interfere with the gut biome uh, of a bee, and, and we can find a, two, four years ago it's interfering with gut biomes of people, and that gut biome material that is working is is the answer to make us keep us basically healthy most of the time, fighting off all that ne Mother Nature has in its negative uh, aspects in us to keep us strong. Do we get weakened in those areas? And med Western medicine, in this case, doesn't know. Do you think the AI is going to be programmed when it starts issuing medicine to stop a cancer that you caught because you didn't know it was about your gut biome, for instance? So, just, again, put this stuff together for yourself. 
step, take a step back, understand what we might be not, we're being fed a line uh, possibly, we have to figure out counter to that what, what the reality is and then whether or not we can do something about it and then to do something about it. So again, AI sitting there to take on this information, what information is taken on, we don't know, but we're finding out that there's uh, pretty serious problems happening that have been allowed to be in the world. And who allowed those but the government agents, agencies? And they have their system of how the system is set up. It's wired before we got there. Why I kind of tell you, I always say kind of, I always got to have a hesitation. No, I tell you. And a couple of, of, some of you have tried to enter into this and found out it's a little more complex than just dropping a note on somebody when the system is wired in order to defeat you before you got there. And so what you have to do is go and look at how that system's wired and rewire it. You have to take how it's wired and then go to the points of the weakness that you find and rewire those first. It takes a little bit of a study. It's not impossible. It can happen pretty quickly. I tell you to get through to it like using your Administrative Procedures Act. You can do that pretty quickly. You find out what failed, what they didn't do in those objective black and white words that say they were supposed to do this. Unless provided. Whoa, that's a, that's a big door for you. Those two words. And you, that's how you go in. That's how you, you walk into those, with those two words on that statute. You walk right in and say, uh, you didn't have the, you weren't provided for you to do it that way. You were to put meaningful interpretation on what you did. You can't do it without knowing this. And here's the bullet point for that, and here's some supplemental information. It's really not that hard. It's just a way to communicate. And you have to do that because there's lots of people that are in the way that thought they were doing it right. There's always going to be that problem as well. It's a human dynamic thing, the animal dynamic. Can't be high spirited, you know, elevated spirited pe people and beings. No, we got to always be we're operating out of our base nature. And so that the base nature gets exploited. And another thing I've been telling you about with this AI and the digital and Internet of Things and this thing, the technocracy, the, the silent weapons, the quiet war, they'll make a place in the circuit for you to pl put yourself in. You'll plug yourself in. You'll buy in. You'll plug in. You'll be a part. And then they put the demand on you because now you're a part. And to make your life all simple about that going in that direction, and you just give over to it. And I have to admit, it's, they make it nice and simple for us to do that. I'd sure like to have a whole lot of other things in my life. But I just, if I look in the future, I said, that's not something where a direction I want to go. It would be cool, but I just can't see, I, don't, I can't justify that, that, really the unprincipled ring in my nose. Where they start putting all this other stuff out there, and they start becoming, creating experts that don't exist, and we find out later they're hurting us. That I've been critical of the phones. Uh, not that I don't like them, I mean, I think they're fantastic tool, like anything, like any tool that you can use in good, it's good, but there's also those that will wield it bad, and we've seen plenty of evidence of how they do that again, this is all tied to the AI, all that connection is going to be into it, you're not going to you know, you're going to have the number the, 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 the number of the beast, it's going to be a phone number from your phone to their, their account, that's what it's going to be it's going to be right in your hand too and you're going to remember that number in your forehead, how's that? no, well, you got to have a pin number for that what number was that? Where you get that? Where do you get that? In the money, it's in your mind. You you start doing that like you can pledge the allegiance, even though you don't know you know what the hell hell, hell that means. But uh, so here it comes. I was telling you these phones are important. We're now seeing a whole bunch of stuff happen in the uh, in the uh, digital sphere of social media, showing us the problem of these things. It's one of my main problems with Minds.com. I don't have a phone, so I can't give them a phone number. I was more than intrigued to find out that they went right to getting phone numbers from people to say that they can fire up their tokens. That was, I can't tell you how big a red flag that was. And they had a stupid and lame excuse. They still haven't got back to me. Now they're threatening the tokens I do have, which I don't keep as a token. I keep them as the old one. I was just going to advertise on that system. I can't, now, it's, now it looks like I'm not going to even be able to keep that. They want your phone number. They claim they're not going to use it. But can you trust them? I don't know. I couldn't. I can't trust anybody, actually. But here's here's comes out in the news now for you all. How integrated all this is going to be. How easy it is to get it in your hand and how easy it is you're going to continue to use it. It's not a judgment against us. They're preying upon the things we need. No different than you want to stay alive and your health is bad. They've made it look like they can help you. And all they do is they treat you and they continue to treat you. However badly they want. You have no other choice because you've just given it over to them. This is what they do. Google China prototype links searches to phone numbers. I told you the pivot to China wasn't just military. 
It was, I told you through the IMF, the World Bank, I told you through the ex handing over of the decision to do financial, cons financial type systems in the, in the blockchain was telling you the future was coming from China because they're a population base, they're way big enough, and they've got enough experience in, in, in handling that that they can then take that model on the smaller level and attach it to the world. We see, I told you, the big data is going to be a problem. They're going to be worse than probably the government. So now you see here that Google and China are teaming up. And for the moment, let's look away from the fact that China's maybe just one big corporation anyway. I haven't looked at their system. I don't really care to. I got a problem with the one I'm living in. I could care less, actually. If, if it's, it's probably going to be the same system anyway. But I can't speak the language, so it doesn't matter. I live here, not there. But I see now what they're doing. That they bring, they pull these model systems out, and then they they roll them out on the world. The new roll up for the new update. Google proto built a prototype of a censored search engine for China that links users' searches with their personal phone numbers, thus making it easier for the Chinese government to monitor people's queries. The search engine codenamed Dragonfly was designed for Android devices and would remove content deemed sensitive by China's ruling Communist Party regime, such as information about political descendants, free speech, democracy, human rights, in a peaceful protest. That's the least of it, folks. They're after your it's controlling you, the social credit, remember? Getting the getting theirs from you. They're a parasite. They use all this other stuff as a stocking horse to make you think you're gonna lose something. Just get off of it and you get it back, right? But no, you forget about all that stuff. You've got to be tied in, you can't do it without it now. Google is teaming up and what they need to keep it straight is a phone number. How convenient. How behind the woodshed, folks? I told you, these phone numbers, these things, these phones, these connections, these IDs to you are critical. Now you get a phone, you're going to have the right to vote in West Virginia. Vote harder, folks. It's not even about the vote harder part now. Now they got you in the system. You think there's an AI behind that looking at your social credit? I told you, be careful what's coming. Here it is already. I can't even talk about this stuff fast enough now. It's here. And then we get another story on another big data, face plant. You gave face plant your phone number and now, and you're, uh, for security, and they used it for ads. Well, that's what big data told us. It's not, that's not even a shock. I had a, a phone number, and I, I never gave Facebook for targeted advertising to list the deceptive, invasive ways Facebook makes money off your personal information. Why is this even a story? This shouldn't even be here. But because they, everyone believes what they're told and they get into this stuff and they give over the information that they should never give or should reject because they shouldn't give it for the purpose of the future that they see coming, they give it. And it's being used without your knowledge. Now, we've got a trust issue. Why do you continue trusting? Why is face plant even existing today? Why does Google even exist? But they're on that number. We want to track in on that number. You have the number of the beast. Contrary to expectations of Facebook representatives, that's all I need to know, folks. It's done. And keep keep face planting daily. Go ahead. Uh, own Facebook's own representative statements. The company has been using contact information that users explicitly provided for security purposes, and uh, those users never provided at all the, for targeted advertising. The advertising is the least of it, folks. They're using that number to track you. This is the face of what they, they're telling you they're doing. They're doing everything else that you, don't, you probably won't even imagine. This is all going to be tied into uh, the boss, folks. And then you have the EUFI hackers. Who are they going to be? Well, you, Again, there's a record you gave them, they use it. There's no stopping. They can tell you anything they want. Same thing at Minds.com. Oh, you can always use your tokens. You don't have to do this. Well, you have to have a phone number if you want to val validate the, the token, but we're not going to do it. We don't have to do that. We're not going to interfere with that. Now I get an email that says, you've got to take action. We need your phone number. Oh, we are only using it to create a hashtag number. I asked them to make a separate system. Well, we can't do that. We promise not to do it. We just use it for the hashtag. Can I trust them, folks? I don't even know them. Can I trust them? I wish I could trust them, but the answer there is no. 
couldn't trust Faceplant, can't trust Google, don't trust Twitter. And here's the fact of what goes on. They come in and they give you a tool. They tell you it's for your security. The next thing you know, they're using it for their advantage against you. Two-factor authentication is what they're doing it for. And that's not the problem because you should be secure and have a way to do it. But they take that ability and they, your need and they run you down with it. Just like the cops, if you think there's a difference here. And then we find out this little tidbit of information. I haven't figured out more. I don't have the time to go look at it yet. Out from faceplant and being exposed for that, we also find out they were starting, the faceplant was going to do away with phone numbers and had their own system. A two-factor authentication for Facebook, they claimed, was easier to set up, but it was not using that phone number. How did they even get caught then? So my observation on this Minds.com is, well, if, fa if Faceplant can do this without a phone number, why can't they set up a system for me? Why do I need a phone number? Why does anybody need a phone number? And yet China is setting it up with Google to get that phone number. Is that, I mean, is that okay? You're going to continue to be okay with all this? They get your, you know, in America, they get your, your information different ways. They don't do it so obvious in some of this stuff. This is a different, slightly different thing with you going to a service and thinking that's more important than your actual security. And I'm not talking about security on your faceplant account. I'm talking about your life's security. So phone numbers have become real important in your phones in doing anything on the Internet, and now we see it tied together with, a, with, a, with China, a country who's been given the right by the bigger uh, governance organizations to make the, set, the policy systems that they're going to roll out on the world that last week we heard is being rolled out already. They're, they're Again, they're so far ahead of the game. I don't think I was too far out to predict this back, maybe back in 2012 or something like that, about how they were given China the the right to be making the policies. The United States was perfectly fine with it. Russia was perfectly fine with it. Said so they're in on it, folks. This is a literally the global governance. And they need they need to find ways to separate you from the herd and the way again numerics is a good way to do it and that's one of the main ways they get to talk to you. They keep track of everything you do and you're going to hand it over to them and you continue to hand it over and until you stop handing it over to them. You all wonder, well, how'd, how'd they get me? And you start worrying, oh, my birth certificate, oh, my driver's license, oh, my name. Uh, you don't have to get it. You've, just, you've handed everything already. You're, you're kind of really sitting on the spit turning is all that's going on from my perspective, and you take no steps to make it to limit those exposures. It's partly why I have so much trouble doing much of anything. Uh, on the, I don't go and get lots of things. I don't take benefits. Uh, it would be so much easier in my life if I did uh, just to go ahead and give them certain things, but I just don't. It, they don't make it easy to do that. You, you will conform if you want the service, the, the service they offer. And so, you can, you've got to make that decision, I suppose. And so I do enough of this. I get on the air. I get on. I get. I have an account. Do do the emails. I got to have an account there. But there's no information hardly that's being put put out about all that. I don't get a phone and get integrated with that. If I do get a phone, if they're still available, it's going to be one without all the connection to the the smart phones. It'll. I think they still have ones that are non uh, non connected. I don't even know it. I don't need them. So I just, I just put. I told you I went to an austere place. So I'll try and do as little as I. I get as much done as I can with what little bit I'm given. That's the prison. Otherwise, going the other way and trying to become, having, making, making myself available to all that. You start coming into these kinds of conditions. Facebook advertising really doesn't matter. I'm just pointing that out. It says they lied to you. I'm pointing out to you that I'm being the same, given the same line from another, uh, uh, an alternative to faceplant. I see Google doing the same thing, and they're working with a big nation which has the power to hurt somebody. I see all the other countries being quiet about that. And then we hear about 
snow job and his exposure, to his credit for that much, that we have the United States is doing what they're doing, of Britain do a GCHQ and all that nonsense. All for what? And but there it is, and I guess that's the point of the reality. What, what are you going? What are you going to do? How, how are you going to go through there? Are you going to continue to take on these uh, so-called services and these help, you know, these these helpful hints to, that they offer you, you know, to do make your life faster and better and cleaner and and more uh, more digital? I suppose. I don't. What what is that that they're actually offering you? Interesting video came up talking about China and what people do and what how the how the Chinese are going are accommodating those that have got their face in their phones, watching face they'll do face plants on face phones, and they'll do it in the fast lane in China, a mall in China put in traffic lanes just for people staring at their phones. If you don't think we're we're really predictable type creatures. A literal traffic lane for people staring at their phones. What's interesting in the link, you get the broadcast after the broadcast when I put it up. A little bitty video. Uh, I think if I remember this, I haven't seen this for quite a while. I'm finally getting into these older tabs. The talk, it's all consistent and been consistent about talking about it. You get to about 13 seconds in and you'll see uh, someone who doesn't really want to do their phone and they're uh, being attacked by the cops, getting beat down on the ground. Not this little video, it's a little animated video, was uh, pretty cool, uh, telling you the truth about how you will conform. In China, they're giving you a special lane. It's like driving an electric car in California. It's like driving, a, what was that, um, a carpooling. You've got more than two people in your car. You get to go a special lane. You get, you get, this, you get the, the special tra the treatment. And you're buying in, what you didn't know you're buying into is a transportation, inter, a multimodal transportation system that wants you into a more efficient transportation system. You become the bus before they, you, they get you to get in their bus. You get penalized if you don't buy in. You don't want an electric car, fine. You, get to get, you go in the rest of the herd, the slow lane. You don't want to get a phone, the cops will come beat you down until they get the phone. And when they do, you'll have a special lane that they can do. It's already happening in China. It blew me away, this story. It was kind of funny. That they already accommodated, a company's already accommodating this fact where people are blind and fo focused on their phones, and that's their world. And each one of those phones that they're focused on is controlled and, can, and monitored. And when you start getting into social credit, that should start to bother you just a little bit. Chinese pedestrians glued to their phones. If a middle path emerges, it's a green strip of, of pavement that says cell phone only. <laughs> and, you, and you get to travel the fast lane down the sidewalk, folks, unimpeded. Now that, that's pretty cool service by the government. Make your own lane. But what, what about these phones? What about them? Use a phone? This means you your private life has suddenly exploded. Again, what I've been telling you is coming, and what you have to endure if you plug in that way is that you have no privacy. I don't mean, I don't mean, I mean, I don't know what I mean. It's just you have nothing that's private to you. The problem is, as a reflection, it, it becomes a chain. It's not just that you're not private. It's that you have to be, you are then imposed through it. It's like the short leaf leash they get to yank on you, the chains they get to pull. You you put this is a self inflicted servitude. You're a slave to this thing. You're such a slave they've actually made a, a chute for you to walk down in China. Understand this is a population that is a lot more than anybody else in the world. Uh, that that does, this is their exa our example of us in them. Maybe you're. Uh, when we're looking at this articles, maybe you would say, of course, I, I, I know that, uh, that the phones are, are being read. I know that uh, if I were to tell your phone it was tracking you, maybe you even remove the battery sometimes, but then no one can reach you. And whenever you make a call or just check the time or look up something on the web, you put it back and bam, it's tracking you again. It is this condition, condition of persistent surveillance. 
there's really nothing you can do with these devices that don't have a built-in uh, um, capacity to finally give up its information when you finally get into a, uh, where you are going to use. And the problem with these, uh, these like these iPhones, it doesn't matter. Now, they got rid of the way of removing the battery. Remember, they put a battery in the battery if you could. If you knock out everything in it that is supposed to communicate with the outside world, it used to be it would, and then when you turned it on, it did this pulse. Now we're finding out you can't actually turn that function off. You are wired. You are doing this to yourself. And it's hard not to. I don't have to give over to that much, but again... When something is that, I've never been a drug, a drug centered guy, drug addict type, no, drug user. I never thought about it. It just never appealed to me. So I have to talk out of, out of my experience point here. But just on like looking at the point of problems when people, we hear they do meth and then they get wrapped up in it. If I look in the future, it's like I, I don't even want to do drugs I see like that. I don't even want to try that. There's nothing in it that I've seen that it would do me any good. And part of me says, well, why? Take the chance when you hear it's super addictive. Now, I don't even think that's going to be a problem for me, but I'm not even interested to transit. But here's the point. Of, do, we, do we do like the drug pusher? Do we take a little bit to see if, if we're strong enough to resist? It's more likely not something. I'm a little more conservative that. I don't need it. Don't see anything it does for me. I'm not going to even test that provision. So for me, when I see the future of these phones and this you know, satellite weapons of quiet wars and the manipulation that goes on and the human frailties that we have and the ease with which it is to fall into that, my option is better now looking forward. Is I just don't. I just choose not to go there. I don't even want to test it. I don't want to test my vulnerability to that. I don't want to test my will in that area. I got other things I want to do more important. So that's how I seem to approach things. Uh, maybe a little more more cautious, but it's allowed me to look forward and, and not be too tied in like a, a phone. What is? Uh, yeah, it'd be nice to have a phone, but look at all the servitude you get when you get one. It's just not worth it for me. That there's a lot of these choices to make in the world that we. I'd rather just. I just don't do. I just don't even. I look in the, into it. I look out into the future of it. I look at the dynamic of it. And I say, well, do I really need that? And if I don't, and it's a big enough problem, I don't even touch it. It's like the third rail for me. And that's how a lot of this stuff, it's easier to put yourself in a, an austere condition when you really have to go back to basics, somewhat that, such that they are, whatever the basics are. There's, we're not down into the caves yet. But, you know, and I had to go front literally almost, almost from a cave. I was out in, the, out in the mountains. So I've been there. I've been to the rudiments of stuff had to make things up in order to have the conveniences of, of home, if you will, that most people have. Hot water, running hot water is kind of an interesting, uh, you wouldn't find out how much. When you come from it, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of an interesting when you like, and I like I like to have a hot water, so I had to figure out how to augment that when I didn't have connection to the system. Uh, having um, cold water sometimes, too. Uh, clean water. It's all you have it to supply yourself. It's a little different condition. And so you learn to live with less, but you do within your means, but you do have some means. But a lot of things you look at, uh, I can look at the technology and I say, there's none of that I need. There's nothing that's going to do anything for me. And so I don't even enter in. I don't even allow it the possibility to test me on whether or not I'm going to be so-called addicted to that and get more. And I think, for me, it's important because there's just so much that it's so wrong now that we have more of the things that we need to focus on, at least I've seen, but don't require all of that, actually. And so we have these choices to make. I'm not trying to make a decision for you. It's just how I, I'm trying to give you an insight of how I looked at it. I just don't touch some of this stuff. Oh, I see the, I see the, the benefits, but it's not, it has these uh, anchors, these, these millstones that are, hanging all over it that just don't excite me at all. And this is one of the things about the fact that once you're you're leashed to one of these devices, there is no escape. Not even if you put it away. Not even if you let the battery die. If there's some power so it'll go up until it has no power, it'll collect all that data, whatever it collected up. The first time you open that thing into the environment and it has the ability to take a breath, it'll send the information it's got to somewhere 
it'll locate wherever that is. It'll maybe even take its picture. It'll know it'll be like a rover on, on Mars, but it'll be you. It'll be attached to you because they got your number. You didn't have its number. They got your number. So digital IDs become real important, don't they? And your phone number is this big, big problem. It is what I they use to, to identify you. We have a story on how they want to deal with that. The title of this is Digital IDs Needed to End Mob Rule Online, says Security Minister Ben Wallace. Well, you think, folks, what have I been talking about all this time? They want you to have an ID. They want to be able to ID you. This is coming from a government. A lot of bullying on social media and the grooming is because these those people know you cannot identify them. Is that really the truth? Or is that the stocking horse they use in order to get you to have and be uh, legislate in the requirement for a digital ID? How much different is that than than China? Or Google? Or Faceplant already? See, they've already conditioned you to this. You've By the millions have handed it all over. Well, those of you that have. And those of you that have but pull out, they still got that much, don't they? This is why I get real I get real shy at even getting into anything else. I'm real real hesitant. Now, digital ID should be brought to an to, brought, digital ID should be brought in to end online anonymity that permits mob rule and lawlessness online, the security minister said. Understand the condition. Understand what the, how they're going to bring this on. Understand they use all these um it's all nonsense, but they fabricate. This is a creating a cause that really doesn't exist, certainly not the way they've construed it, just to be able to come in and give you this solution. This is consensus processing. This is alternative dispute resolution. We have a problem we've invented. It sounds plausible to you, so you agree that there's a problem. You don't say anything against it. Because there was no resistance, the crickets, they move to bring the outcome they need. It's real simple process. It's what I talk about all the time. It's what we fight all the time. It's what we defeat everywhere we assert ourselves. Why we need more people just to understand these simple concepts. This is in Britain. I told you what's happening in Britain is going to be in the United States shortly. In actual reality, this is already in the world. It's being planted in different places. And so you they look for your consumption, your buy-in on all this. And this is why the, the problem of the, the crickets is so much. Just your act to to, a, to acquire something, your act to get something, to fill out something, is used in this capacity to bring the buy-in and the way they get their, their metrics to say you're buying in and push and promote more. They, so they claim there's a bunch of bullying and because we can't ID you, then uh, we you don't deserve to be out there. That's, again, a presumption of, of guilt, isn't it? So you're innocent, but they run you down. It's like the cops in the cars. They run you down the digital highway. They run you down. And they do it with the fraud. They do it with a, with a, a there's no, no sense of lawfulness in it. What, they talk to be people that are lawless, and they come and run you down without a law, a right to do so. And we're okay with that, apparently. So they get their... You say stay silent, and they make the record that said there's a need, and the need is counter to what you actually need. It's what they need, and it goes through. And this is about the problem about silence, and the, the enemy has figured out how to use it. And yet, when they use it, they're protected. In other words, they, they run somebody down that's innocent, that doesn't, they're not a criminal. Well, there might be some civil liability, but insurance covers that, or... Who else? Someone else, not the cop. They get the taxpayer, so-called taxpayer, too. Because none of you all understand how to pull your uh, challenge, your, your property tax, for being a crime against you. I don't know why that is. I don't know why that simple letters being communication don't start exposing all that for you. You make a, be make a record for yourself of how the fraud sets up. It's not that hard. I told you, you go to one state, it's got a... It's got a uh, uh, a statute says you can't come against this title or this uh, this evidence and in any judicial proceeding or any other proceeding at all to interfere with it, 
I don't know what else you would need in that state in order to stop them from taxing a property they don't have the right to tax. The fraud of which they claim is not in the status that it was underneath the patent evidence. It was in somehow their commerce. What they call ad valorem. Added value for being in that state, whatever state they, they think that they're saying is not your state. And they, through their situ their system, provide value to you and they're, you're gonna get, they're gonna take their cut. Why you keep your property in that status, or at least as a record of fraud against the property, I don't understand. But then you're getting over here. Uh, so the government, they don't want you to conceal yourself, but they uh, will obviously use it by this story. U.S. police using Tiger Text. Tiger Text is an app to conceal evidence. Now, what really, what's the system do you live in that, that allows the cops to tamper and hide and destroy evidence and continue to do so? Can't be the one, the, 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 the peaceful nation of uh, Samarit, good Samaritanism and, 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 and good, good will on men that, that we've been all told. Al Jazeera's investigative unit has discovered a self-deleting message app called Tiger Text has been adopted at, by at least one U.S. police department, which may have used it to share sensitive and potentially incriminating information that they wouldn't want to be disclosed to a court. Current and former officers from the Long Beach Police Departments of Southern California have told Al Jazeera that their police-issued phones had Tiger Text installed on them. Tiger Text is designed to erase text messages after a set time period. Once the messages have been deleted, they cannot be retrieved, even though forens even through forensic analysis of the phone. So they want to identify you. They want to keep down mob rule, but they let their gangs get away with destroying evidence, or potentially so. Why is that still on the books? Why is that still allowed after that story? This is an old story. I'm finally getting to some old tabs I've been trying to get through. Hopefully I'll get done here in a real quick moment. I'll get a whole bunch of new stuff for next month, next week. No, it might be next month too, wouldn't it? Hey, well, that was fast. So, they want to destroy the evidence and they are not guilty of the crime. What reality, what society you live in where that's right? Can't be the one we were told in the United States of America we lived in. It can't be a place, uh, when we see these next stories, when I tell you about Title 50, it can't be the place we were told when the government has the right to give it some so-called license to hurt you under the name of so-called national security. Remember the security is there. They use it to secure you from them, from hurting them. You're innocent, but they had the right to se secure the law. Even though you were innocent, they run you down. That's okay. Not a crime. They can temper and destroy evidence, potential evidence. Not you. It's okay for them. But we have this, the, the news all the time about this digital world we're walking right on into. How detrimental it is. How advantageous it is to the technocrats or the military occupiers. The cyber war they're going to create against you all. They keep telling about it. No one really realizes. They think, oh, we're going to go against the Russians. No, it's against you. If China isn't that li li that notice to you, I don't know. You need to really look a little closer. But there's also the physiological problems with this technology. I'm going to get through a whole bunch of this, hopefully. This is not, not really good stuff. It's why I've had CRT monitors for a long time. Till recently, I've had, to, had one uh, kind of start to fail. Uh, there's a frequencies and things that are being done in those, uh, in the newer ones that are not too cool. Uh, this I keep talking to you about binary weapons. I keep talking to you about uh, frequencies and uh, being able to program you and all these kinds of things. And it's all built into this technology. It's, it's fascinating one of it's terrifying at the other because you know that stuff's just not being used for good things. Oh, they claim they want to stop mob rule on the internet, but uh, the, you turn around and the gang turns around and destroys its evidence. It's supposed to be for lawful purposes. It's, a, it's always this, uh, this Janus look. It's uh, what's not good for you might be good for us, and what's good for us may not be good for you. By way we interpret it, and now, by the way, in the future, by the the boss uh, interpret the AI. The dark side of computers, smartphones, and tablets. Blue light causes cancer, ruins your eyes, and makes you makes you toss and turn at night. This is a fascinating little study or a discussion. Uh, this has to do with what I was telling you about the frequency shifts and what it does in your body, and your body responds to this stuff. Uh, it's, um, well, I can just go through a little bit of it. I use a computer, not I, this uh, author uses a computer smartphone 
for 10, uh, more than 10 hours a day. So I wasn't happy to learn that recent scientific studies show the blue light emitted by our computers, tablets, smartphones, and can cause cancer, ruin your eyes, and cause insomnia. All right, so I can go through all the reading again. The frequency of the light that comes out of these uh, LEDs is a little digital uh, diodes, uh, light emitting diodes, can has a frequency. That frequency can interact with your body. You can go through the story, you can read about it. You get on the internet, you can study it. Right? It's why when I set up my monitors, I turn them as far as, it's particular the, the, the LCD I have here, I turn it way down and I try to get the, the color of it, uh, the color balance down out of the blue range as far as I can get it. It's easier to do that on a CRT. The problem is that these uh, LCDs have a backlight, and I think that's a problem. They're able to flicker that light. They're able to flicker each little LED at a different frequency. They're able to put all these different frequencies together, and I told you it's not just the frequencies, it's how they interact. You have beat frequencies. You have uh, 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 addition frequencies. You have uh, uh, absence. V, uh, I can't remember the word uh, for the, uh, the negative uh, part of those. They all do something. And so there's a study that starts to tell us that these technologies they handed us ha happen to hurt us. They, uh, they also, I think, I don't know if this is one to say, ca cause cataracts in your eyes. The energy that comes from these devices is not healthy for us. It programs us in ways counter to the sun. The sun has a frequency shift, light frequency shift that it puts out as it goes from uh, east to west. It triggers certain physiological conditions in us so that we can go to sleep or not. This, these devices, these LED devices, interfere with that. And so here we're having to use these weapons against, they're being used against us. And these things can be, can get, um, well, well, let me read some more. Well, I've got a bunch of tabs now. It goes on, what the effects of this technology is. While we sleep, our mind goes on an amazing journey. This is a story I think I was, I think I might have touched it before. That our brain profoundly alters its behavior purpose, dimming our consciousness. For a while, we become almost entirely paralyzed. We can't even sh shiver. Our eyes, however, periodically dart about uh, behind closed lids after, a, after, as, as if seeing the tiny muscles in, a, in our middle ear, even in silence, move as though hearing. We are sexually stimulated, men, men and women both, repeatedly. We sometimes believe we can fly. We approach the frontiers of death. We sleep. There's a discussion here about encephalograph re readings about this. You, you think you're going to sleep, and you're actually going into a whole other state where your brain is rewiring. It's re-assimilating itself, uh, um, reconditioning itself to re and do it again, programming itself to do and accept what it was supposed to done. do. It, it, it works on frequencies. It works on frequency inputs. It re remember we, we we found out that the new AIs uh, can be manipulated by a mind. We heard last week that one uh, uh, disabled uh, someone who's disabled can run three machines, uh, can operate three uh, military fighter jets, and now they get signals back from those jets. This is what's going on in your body. It's really kind of fascinating how this all all works out. But the problem here about this technology is this blue wavelengths. They promote alertness in daytime. And the red light is best at night because it has, has less power to alert the brain. And then it sets a re, it does a reset of our biological clocks for other purposes and for other things in our body to re, help build itself. This technology alters all of that. It interferes with our uh, signaling in our brain. It keeps our, um, our systems out of whack, out of balance, out of, out of, uh, well, I guess, balance with the timing of the structure of our existence in the Earth, around in the system of the sun and the moon and all the stars that we talk about in the, in the electrical fields, for as wild as they might be. Our bodies have grown, our, our systems have grown into that. And so we get us fabricated uh, alternative uh, technology, it starts to interfere with that. We start doing we start doing all this stuff to interfere with our own functions, our physiological functions, and and that causes all kinds of physiological problems, mental problems, even physical problems. Some of the, it manifests itself in all kinds of ways. Uh, I think I got this link from an emailer who asked me to look into this because they were surprised I even talk about this health stuff, or surprised or, or happy, or what? Well, I can't remember what the sentiment was about talking about these interactions with our health. That, again, as I say, you don't have your health, you're really not going to have it. You're focused on your carbuncle because uh, it's just irritating. You're not going to be focused on what you need to be doing. 
So it's best just not to have the car bump. But we have this technology that puts out certain type of frequency of light that programs us, and we're not even aware of it. Uh, this guy named Jack Cruz, I, I, I can't, I, I, I don't want to, it's a video, all kinds of videos you can get. He has a theory about this transitioning time period and how it affects us. Now, again, you've got to take the information for what it is and uh, learn to discern here. The point is he's opening up a, a, an old type of information that I've, I've heard about a long time ago, but he's, there's videos on it now. You can, you can get yourself familiar with these with these concepts that what we're destroying and nat naturally to us we're destroying with this new technology and they're handing it to us uh, that and doing that way they're, they're, that's it's done for doing that because they can again if they can get your your physiology programmed or deprogrammed to fun dysfunction then you are weakened in some way they can use other technology to enter in like binary weapons trinary weapons a guy named Jack Cruz, maybe somebody you want to check out, he talks about this uh, programming, the natural programming that goes in, and then how this light that we get from this device is, that he's found, he's a lot more versed in the science side of it than I am, uh, but ha what he's found uh, is actually causing problems. And we're totally oblivious to these things as well. And there's things you can so say, here's the point. Okay, what do you do with it? Well, he offers some information on... If you have, given we have to use these devices at some level, if I have to talk to you, I'm going to have to look at a monitor. If I'm going to do my work uh, on writing paper and I use a digital uh, pr word processor, I have to look at a monitor. I have to do it as long as I'm going to do it. My hours are a lot longer than a, than a sunshine. You know, that's again another problem that we've done for ourselves with the generation of power, notwithstanding the frequency we might be using is odd. But we do this stuff to ourselves. We have a cause. We're, commi we're committed to our cause, and then this stuff is destroying us. And, it's, and so there's ways, if you start understanding, again, you learn the battlefield of the area, that you learn your weakness, you learn to take steps in order to combat a bit of that, to alter some of that, to diminish its capacity, and you get to move on a little bit better, a little bit farther. You learn certain things that are going on that you have to compensate for. And so I would uh, direct you to, uh, I think it's Dr. Jack Cruz, I think it was K. R U S E. I can't. I can't go to the tab because it'll start up the video, and I can't do that on that machine, so it'll mess up stuff. So I won't touch it. But, uh, anyway, so there's a now a lot of information coming out to tell you the technology that they're handing us that we're plugging in with is physically hurting us. It's physically not good for what we do, and to know that is, I think, important. Uh, children absorb 2.5 times higher doses of microwave radiation than adults, uh, which was. Uh, from virtual reality systems. Another thing I've noticed is the virtual reality, uh, we just heard a report, I think it was Walmart, bought 17,000 virtual reality systems to put on their employees to treat, teach them how, how, to be, how to be employees and dealing with the public. Uh, fascinating what we do anymore, what we allow to be done, but they've done it, they put in virtual reality. In this case, you're going to have to be older than 18, and you're, not, you're probably not going to get this amount of absorption, but the point is that this, these are game machines, the virtual reality is going to be handed to your little ones, it's probably going to be your education system, and when you do that, they're going to be receiving 2.5 times the higher dose. What's that doing to your little ones? There's a study here you can read. I can go through it. I, that's the point. That's the story. That they're working on technologies that no one is stopping to harm uh, the little ones that are absorbing. They now find two times more radiation. And I tell you that that radiation is not just an absorbed radiation. Those are at different frequencies. And if they come together in certain ways, they can do certain things in their interaction, interference, or differences. And there's people out there that know what those are and how they relate to your physiology, how it adjusts uh, certain matters. But, but don't worry, because as they destroy your eyes and you get cataracts from this light, science is working on it. First 3D printed human corneas are right around on the corner. It means uh, the, the 3D printed uh, corneas is a technique that would be used in the future to ensure an unlimited supply of corneas. Well, that's cool, but why an unlimited supply? To whom is all y'all that are face-planted in your phones, on your TV screen, on your monitors? All your TVs now, all the TVs are the same thing now. It's not this, it's totally different now. How, how, how much more, I don't even watch TV. I was still thinking that the TVs were these CRTs. They're not. All your TVs are these same things. All the TVs now, the, at least anybody that's uh, got anything going on, is this technology that burns your, the corneas of your eyes. But don't worry about it. Technology is going to save the day. We can make corneas.
3D printed. Fascinating technology, fascinating stuff, but listen to what they're telling you is going on and what they're preparing to change, to fix. Remember, the boss AI is going to be giving you, prescribing you all this care as they come down and figure out. You'll be looking at your face palm. That camera will take your eye. Oh, you need a cornea transplant. Next thing you know, you're, you're being wheeled by your autonomous car over to the surgeon to get one of these 3D uh, corneas replaced. And you go, oh, oh, I can see fine again. It was looking a little fuzzy. But never fear. Technology's here. They'll fix it for you. But here's the point. All this technology is causing this, and they get to bottom line it to you. And you think this is great. No, don't, don't avoid it until you don't get this. No, let's, let's go ahead and use that. They'll fix it. So we'll just go ahead and stand in that green path in China. I suppose it's a one-way direction. I don't know where the other path is. They didn't show that one. Smartphones are killing teenagers' memories. Start, <laughs> smartphones are killing teenagers' memories. When I say these frequencies, these, these go into your eyes, they go into your mind, your body, and they, they cause trouble. They interact with you. They're enough to mess with your overnight uh, uh, re repairs and uh, sleeping uh, condition. What your brain does, they can see how it's being interacted and destroyed and changed. A study uh, suggests the radiation from smartphones is negatively impact uh, the memories of adolescents. Maybe that, that's why everyone's standing in that green line, folks. I mean, that's why they go down that green line. It's the safest place for them to be. Because their mind is just all gone. They don't have a memory of where they came from or where they're going, or maybe even thinking about where they're going, but they know to follow that green line. Why? Probably because that phone's saying, giving you a track. You keep walking, it's probably got this X. It just stays to put the X in the middle and keep walking and keep reading. New research suggests the radiation from smartphones is negatively impacting neg teenagers' memories, leaving them with short memory term memory loss. What did I just say? I don't know where I'm coming from, but I can follow that green line. You, you think that's anything else? I can't make change, but I got this AI told me what to give you. See, they're already covering. The AI covers that. And I don't have to thought, second thought to, to challenge it. The, the, the concern is that the years, year's worth of radiation could be enough to damage the part of the brain that interprets images and shapes. You don't even see it coming. You won't even see that cop car coming, folks. According to the study, uh, which was published uh, sometime when I got this link, but it said Monday, but this a year, half a year ago, researchers found that there is a negative impact on memory performance after exposure to radio frequency electromagnetic field RF EMF radiation. This may suggest that indeed RF EMF absorbed by the brain is responsible for the observed associations. Enough said, you can get this link when you want to, and you can go back over to find out why this study wasn't put into the uh, experts say uh, associations that the FCC is relying on uh, for, uh, uh, for the information that says that these things, these radiations cause no harm. And there's the study. Depression study pinpoints genes that may trigger the condition. But what triggers the genes? The genes are really just a chemistry initiator, the what enzymes and proteins, right? Nearly 80 genes that could be linked to depression have been discovered by scientists. Do you think that we that other uh, report we just read, where the teenagers uh, going into depression may not be linked to this? They're more susceptible to that. And you found out the younger that you are, you got two to five times more susceptibility to these kinds of environmental damages. The findings could explain why some people may be at higher risk for developing condition of depression. Well, we just heard that the story is that teenagers get it. You think this is possibly the connection, a connection? Well, it's certainly highly possible, wouldn't it be? And you put these two together, you say, oh, okay, we've got something that's not being studied, and you didn't look at it, you need to take a hard look at this, because there's the basics of the information for it, and you don't have information on it, if you're trying to sh shut these people down from harming you. The study could also research, help researchers develop drugs to tackle mental illness. Well, if it's not drugs and they just block it like AI says, oh, we've got a study that says I can give you this drug or this combination of drugs because I'm the only one that can do it now because I'm the boss, I'm AI, uh, you're going to get this instead of saying, oh, get your face out of the, off a face plant and out of that phone. No, no, he's wired to sell you drugs as this AI boss. See, it's up to you to decide to keep your kids away from this stuff as you find it out. Again, as it find it out, because this was already given to you like it was okay. Now we're finding it's not so okay. Do you stay completely away from it? Well, maybe your little ones need to stay away from it. 
go back to the old stuff. They say old school. There's a pen and paper, folks. Have them draw their own comic. Have them do drawings. Have them, like, I used to do this on a little notepad. On the corner of the notepad, you flip the pages, and if you draw different drawings on the corner, you could actually make a movie. All drawn. I could watch my own little TV if I wanted to. I had little stacks of paper all over the place. Bunch of notepads. What was kind of fun is I could have a, a little movie on the bottom, but the notepad in the middle, you can't read that anyway because you know, I can't flip it so fast. And I could still use the notepad, but I had a little movie on the side of every one. Got out. I didn't have a phone. I didn't have a screen. Didn't even watch. Couldn't even watch TV. Phone, TV was off. And so you got to take control of your situation is the other point. Sometimes little ones don't know what's good for them. Sometimes, a lot of times, the adults don't know either, but that doesn't, that's not what I'm talking about. Depression affects one in five people in the UK every year and is leading cause of disability worldwide. Wow, that's something AI can jump on, isn't it? And what's the cause? Possibly these, this technology that's come along and it's reprogramming you to be depressed because it interferes with those genes. Okay, so there's a, you can look around, you can see just a bunch of noise and be fearful, or you can start putting one and one together and make three or four or five, whatever you want to make, to say, hey, it's, this is, the AI doesn't know this. The, 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 medicine, the medical profession doesn't know this. I'm putting it together. And for me, and those I know, I'm going to explain this, and we're going to work to avoid being a victim of it. Social media and video games making children regress to mentality of three-year-olds, says top brain scientists. A British scientist has warned that social media and video games are negatively affecting children's mental and emotional maturity. Well, it may not be what they're seeing. It might be what the technology is doing, isn't it? I'm saying that as a question. I don't know. I see enough evidence in the last few tabs to say we might have a physiological problem that's driving this. It's not just seeing, they want to say violence, like Frank Zappa time, you know, you got to speak the words like this and we want, to, we want to do censorship. No, no, it has nothing to do with what you're looking at. They haven't found that any, like, if you play a game, it, does, it means you turn out to a killing game, you turn out to make, you make, you become a killer. Maybe it's the technology. And so, again, this has got to be careful. They're saying this is social media and video games. You might look at the social media and video games and be, and be uh, insulted by it, but be careful, that may not be the actual action. If you see the, listen to the last five or six tabs, it may not be the what they're seeing as the content. It might be the technology being used to view the content. Advocates condemn psych techniques used to keep kids online. So then we get to the content. What is that content? It's, it's content created by psychologists doing, running their experiments on your kids. Children's advocates want the American Psychological Association to condemn the tech industry's practice of using persuasive psychological techniques to keep kids glued to the screens. Do you think you're nothing but a big kid? Is my when I looked at that first paragraph, everyone thinks it's the kids. You got to protect the kids. How about you? You think your physiology is different? Well, maybe a little bit. You're less susceptible and less res less uh, susceptible to the, some of this damage when you get older but it doesn't mean you're not susceptible because Dr. Cruz is an older guy. He's telling you he has the problems and he has to be careful. And he looks around and he sees everyone else has the problems and they're all not kids. Little goats. They're grown-up goats. They are people programming content on this technology that are, for whatever reason, there. I just say they're there. And it's harming kids' well-being. They don't care. It could be a test. Remember, if it's all for national security, Title 50 says they get to do it. I can read these. I can read, I'm looking at all the stuff to be doing to read. You just need, if you're interested in how this stuff works, you need to start getting engaged and find this information out, put it together, and start doing something with the information. There, this is a weapon against society. They talk about kids. It's easy. That's an easy stalking horse. It's everyone, folks. Everyone's affected by this. Uh, for you, you have to understand how it might affect you and do things that counter it. Figure out what that is. High-speed Internet is causing widespread sleep deprivation study. Fine, for those of you on 5G and all that, here's a study. I don't know how valuable it is. You take it and you go see what's going on, and now we have a study that you have sleep deprivation. Well, guess what? Isn't that tied into the insomnia that the technology causes about six tabs, seven tabs down the line from here? Before, sleep deprivation is an increasing problem in many developed countries, which can be result in impaired cognition, and a number of serious individual societal consequences. Yeah, you start following green lines on the pavement. 
Lack of sleep has been linked to a billion dollars worth of lost revenue. AI, the boss medical man, is going to be giving you some drugs for that. Integrated, too, beyond the scope of what people understand at this point. So, I mean, here's the point. Physiological effects from using the technology, whether it's like the screens, the frequencies coming off the devices, the frequencies used by the devices outright, understand that it's there. Do not dismiss it. Take steps to protect you, and then if you're beyond that to just protect what you want to tell other people, make bullet point, take all this stuff together, make bullet point concise, understandable, non-fearful responses, and say, listen, there's some real things going on here you need to know about. That 5G, that pulse that comes out of this thing, it has been shown by this study, the pulse that comes out, the magnitude of the pulse and its, its speed is what does the damage, and they're not testing for that. Not even what's on the information. In other words, a small amount of energy, but done very fast, is like you kind of think a rifle bullet would be. You don't have to have a whole lot of, a whole lot of output if you, if you switch it really, really fast. And so there's a, that's what they start to do. These high frequencies start switching. They're switching things faster. You don't need as much energy to start doing more, as much damage. Now, the radiative field only lasts where it goes. It's, it's off at the square of the distance. You find that in physics. But the impact on physiology is, uh, or electron, actually electronics as well, is uh, by other parameters. So the technology that they're handing to us, is the, the plug, and, uh, plug and play, is causing damage. It's just like, well, okay, don't worry about it. The cornea, your corneas will be fixed. They got to, they can print those out. You will be able to, you'll be able to replace your own corneas probably pretty soon in the future. You just 3D print them, right? Why? Well, uh, who cares? I'll just put a little pouch in my eyes and I'll just uh, let the let the screen burn my eyes. I can replace the cornea. I got my 3D printer in the other room. It runs on a computer too. In fact, the AI, the boss medicine man, he just told me I can go do that. He gave me a prescription for it. But what about the UEFI hacker? Maybe he'll kill you. He'll maybe he'll so benefit. He'll put you green. He'll give you some green corneas. He'll give you rainbow corneas. He'll give you rose-colored corneas. You think that the, the hacker will do that for you, folks? Don't worry about it. They'll fix it. Keep looking at the technology. Keep using it without consideration for what it's actually doing to you and your little ones, most importantly. So the content is also controlled. Uh, the, it's psychologically damaging to people. Uh, you, you're going to pass it off to the kids, the little goats. I, I think that uh, they're, they're the least of it as well uh, because you're the one that's in the driver's seat and you're the one that probably uses it the most, actually. You have the say. Google tracks your movements, like it or not. What I was telling you earlier is now in the press. Uh, you can say you don't want Google to do something. They're still going to do it. Remember, the Android device is a setup of software and a system that Google designed. You are likely not the root, the very basic. And even if you were, maybe a UEFI, UEFI hacker has that. But if, even it, even there, you're still using their OS, their operating system. Google has designed this. It's not yours. It's beyond us now. So, But we continue to use their products. And so they have it set up. You can tell them that you turn off something, and it won't. In fact, one of the reasons why my system kind of messed up, I was working with a new program, and I was something started happening. I said, well, I don't even want that thing running. It came with the program. I don't even want it running. I tried to turn it off. You couldn't turn it off. I said to turn it off, but I couldn't turn it off. And so this is the, you have a false front. They tell you that you're good doing something, and they're doing something totally different. They tell you they want your phone number to keep you more secure, and they're going to sell it to somebody. China will take that and track you down and murder you. United States, it'll go into an AI car, and it'll run you down. Google's the front, forefront of this. It'll track your movements, if you, to, if you, whether you like it or not. A cell phone addiction is turning wireless tech into invisible weapon that destroys wildlife. What did I just say, folks? These stories just kind of culminate in all this stuff I've been telling you for years. And they're now the, it's just telling you that it's actually happening. This is not sci-fi, not fear-mongering. These are conditions in real life, real time, that you need to be cognizant of so that you can protect yourself from it as best as you can. Do I worry about all this? I do it the other way. I said, well, it's out there. These things can do that. What do I do to mitigate those? Because at this point, I need these tools to do, do certain things. I certainly don't uh, do more than I need to, though. 
I, again, I don't get the phones. I don't keep them up to my head. I don't uh, have them around. I don't stick them in my pocket. I don't stick them. I uh, don't have them near me that way. I don't engage with their psychological profiling. I don't engage with the psychological content they're putting for me to get uh, become more button pusher about it. A cell phone addiction is turning to wireless tech into an invisible weapon. What did I just say? Silent weapons for quiet wars, folks. This is it. right here in a story. You want to see what, what's going on? People are finally coming around to it. They're finding out. And it's the same stuff over and over. Do not underestimate the same and the similar complaint. There's growing evidence that our addiction to cell phones could be impacting brain functionality and be the cause of stress, anxiety, insomnia, and a lack of attention and focus. And now a new report found that we're not only living things to be affected, we're not the only living things to be affected, increasing dependence on wired technology. Mammals, birds, insects, even plants are likely being harmed by electromagnetic radiation, EMR, emanating from Wi-Fi, cell phone towers, broadcast transmitters, power lines. According to a new analysis of 97 peer-reviewed studies conducted by Eclipse, with a K, a biodiversity and ecosystem project funded by the European Union. Now, that biodiversity and ecosystem has me questioning, but listen, the reality is if they've got a study that they show this is the fact, why aren't you grabbing that study up and showing you, uh, showing underneath the United States implementation of all these 5G rollouts and these meters, not 5G, but the meters now, that these systems are now uh, interfering with the biosphere, if you will, and I can, and then you listen to me and I tell you that you have a NEPA implementation that went on, that you can go through the administrative side of that and go through the APA of your own state and say, this study was not being given a meaningful interpretation, if at all. If you want to go through what the environmentalist does, you become the environmentalist, but because this is now protecting you. They're now finding it does affect all the life. What did I say about earlier about the gut biome in the bee, relative to Monsatan and Slayer's glyphosate. It's just another environmental pollutant. And I point this out, not to say fear monger. No, here's another study. What are you going to do with it, folks? It's here to use. You go to the FCC and challenge them directly. Well, I don't know if you can because of the way they got it set up. So then you go and you, and you go to the people they call experts, and then you out them for not doing this stuff. And then you attack the meaningfulness of the whole process. You don't walk in there and sing, just talk and cry and scream out of the net last YouTube that you found. You use some of that to go find the basic back, uh, background information that's in print because the evidence is in writing, remember? That's the rule of evidence, in writing. Got to reduce the writing. And then you make you, you present your position, and if you show where they have a requirement to incorporate it, they didn't, and now you open the whole thing back up. Do I want this stuff radiating, all, all this stuff? When I talk about, about biodiversity, I'm against biodiversity. Well, I'm against biodiversity in the way it's being used as a weapon against us, not in understanding our environment needs to be protected. Again, I'm a producer. Uh, ranchers, farmers, we're all producers. We really engage the environment. We really understand it probably a lot better than some people. Farmers and ranchers probably better than even than a miner, but we're not so far away from it. We have to deal with the realities of the, of the environment. I appreciate a deer and a, a, a fuzzy bunny and a lizard and the tall, 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 cooling trees that we 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 work under. So we're we're environmentalists uh, essentially, uh, and uh, so I'm not a worried, a worried uh, concerned about that part. But the way the EU does the biodiversity is to use it as a weapon against you. They turn you against your nature. They don't do what the NEPA does when you look at it, but at least to my mind, more correctly, that you work and they say har enjoyable and productive harmony with it. You're not a separate from it. You're working with it. As every producer understands, the particular farmers and uh, ranchers know about how they contribute to the environment and enhance biodiversity. Smart meters raise, raise health, privacy, and constitutional concerns. Uh, go Again, on and on and on. This is a, was a whole bunch of tabs that I, I was running across now coming out to tell us that these smart meters are, are a problem. Those of you who have heard it, you go, oh, I don't want to hear it no more. Well, folks, you keep quiet. Let someone else think you think someone else is going to do it. Then no one really does it right, and it comes on you. It's coming on lots of places. Uh, but there's a more proper way to hit it, and I think you can. Here's another story about smart meters and home energy usage in the minute detail uh, in real time. The device transmit data utility, uh, to utility companies where it gets stored in database. 
There's your database, AI, computers, all vulnerable. Uh, they all manipulatable. That's why they're finding out that these, uh, when you put the devices on your house, that they also can raise your, uh, they raise your costs. Uh, any rate, so the, the, the uh, point is that smart meters raise health uh, concerns is this, again, this digital technology that we've been talking about that has all kinds of effects that we now have a whole list of things that we can talk to by proof, not our opinion and what we feel about that, what it actually people are doing studies in order to prove it out even after the fact. Smart, right, is not so intelligent. Smart drive claims in-cab truck surveillance cameras are saving the planet. You don't think these people are just flat nuts. Uh, they, anybody will produce themselves into this Internet of Things smart future, the global governance condition of the technocrat. And uh, it'll be a absolute savior of the world. They actually have a company saying that in their technology for of something as, as, as simple as a, an in-cab an in camera system that, again, records everything that you're going to do. But I mean, the people that are in trucking, they know about all this. If you are an employee, you're going to be subject to it. The point will be when the government sets that in for everybody who is in commerce. And that now you start to hear about your, what you folks are going to have to be doing by, by the mile. See, that's all part of that modal, inter, multimodal system of uh, international governance on transportation. You don't even know how it's, been, it's coming into your, your condition. Uh, moving on to being tracked and uh, being traced and having the cars and such, being uh, monitoring what's going on. There was a little story here why it's uh, always impossible, almost impossible to steal a Tesla car. And they go through explaining that they use a GPS. It tracks itself. And they have some software. What I found interesting was more of a statement uh, that uh, it says here, the, the Tesla remote software updates have uh, aimed to keep pace with its increasing prolific production line. It's uh, no mean feat to, keep, to get a stolen Tesla across state lines or even spirited out of the country. Uh, you have to be able to recharge the car, he added, and you need PIN numbers. The thief would also need to stop at the charging station, which are concer concer concentrated along the east and west coasts. As time goes on, the value of Tesla parts the value will go up exponentially. But just like tracing an iPhone, he expects Tesla technology to keep track of them too. And there's the whole point. Just like tracing the iPhone or any Android, whatever. It's tracked and traced. You had to plug that in to charge it. You had to do something to get it to connect to the world. And it's going to call home. It's going to phone home like any other alien you have in your pocket. Apple says it's tracking your calls and emails to prevent fraud. If you don't think that Apple's doing something for you, there it is. Tracking your calls and emails to prevent fraud. you believe them, folks? And this is what blew me away when I saw this story. We haven't, I haven't even mentioned it, this, and I'm going to mention it at the close. Apple founder Steve Wozniak hopes Bitcoin will become a single global currency. You think... Why would he do that when now you find out that Apple's tracking your phone calls and your emails to prevent fraud? What's the whole point about tracking and controlling Bitcoin? Why did China make the rules for it? Why did this story about the founder, Steve Wadnick, this was almost a year now he comes out with supporting this, and then we find out that Apple's tracking you for your benefit, folks. Well, keep plugged in. The silent weapons of quiet wars is full in fact, and I think we're losing the battle here big time. I hope we can uh, turn it around and win the war. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope everything I said, anything I said was uh, instructive or uh, get you motivated to do something or um, hopefully not climb back under a rock. Governor, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. I appreciate it, all what you do over there. And uh, anybody else that's out uh, mirroring and sharing and whatever the, the broadcast and uh, what we do here, remember the broadcaster's there for you all uh, for just the notes and to keep up. And uh, thank you very much for, for being there. What all y'all may be doing, I'll be here next week. Tech diffs, or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information, you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 